There are literally greasy handprints all over this table, all over my mom's mirror, all over my camera gear. It's great. It's good luck. I am a greasy bitch. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some 18th century experiments. I don't know if you all know this or not, but I have been researching 18th century beauty, hair care, and hairdressing now for over six years. And while the culmination of my research can be found in the book, The American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty, I still love exploring new topics and recipes within this field. So today, inspired by our sponsor, Tula Skin Care and Wellness, more on them in a moment, I thought today we could experiment with making an 18th century cold cream or a moisturizer, and also a possible sunscreen. From Toilet to Flora, published in 1772, a widely published book filled with recipe after recipe of cosmetics, skincare, perfumery, etc. Some of the recipes are amazing, like this rouge recipe, which we featured in my book, and some recipes are kind of terrifying, like this eyebrow dye liquid that I totally considered doing for this video, but when I was reading about the chemical that ended up being like a hard no, even though I was amused by the idea of looking like Charlie Chaplin for several weeks afterwards here on YouTube. But I do have a link down to the Toilet de Flora in the description below. It's free to read, download, and enjoy on Google Books. I really, truly love this book, and I think it's a great way to get a good, solid understanding of how the 18th century viewed beauty, which, despite what Hollywood and clickbaity articles would want you to believe, is not based on bad clown makeup, but is instead focused on skincare and highlighting one's features and taking care of your skin. For now, we're focusing on skin care, which is the foundation to 18th century beauty, and today, taking care of your skin is taking care of yourself. And learning how to protect, nourish, and enjoy your skin is, to me, an important part of self-care, which brings me to the sponsor of this week's video, Tula, an amazing skincare company that was founded by practicing gastroenterologist Dr. Roshini Raj that produces and believes in nurturing your skin and keeping it as healthy as possible. Not only is Tula a doctor-founded clean and effective skincare and wellness brand where 100% of the products are formulated with probiotics and superfoods, they're also cruelty-free and I've never tested on animals. Also, just by the way, according to their IG, Dr. Raj has like the cutest little pity baby, and so they get like an extra 100 bonus points because of the baby. What I really love about Tula is their transparency with ingredients and the focus on high quality skincare to help you have the healthiest skin possible. I am obsessed with taking care of my skin, and I have quickly fallen in love with a lot of the products Tula has sent me, especially their Protect and Plump Moisturizer. Holy crap, guys, this stuff is amazing. And yes, Tula sent me a lot of free product to test and try before doing this integration, and yes, Tula is sponsoring this video, but I have never found a moisturizer that I love more than the Protect and Plump. You can pry this stuff, out of my cold, dead, well moisturized, and forever plump hands. Also, their go away acne spot treatment is chef's kiss for when you have like a little zip pop up and you're like, not today, Satan. Look. Our skin's our largest organ, and protecting it, taking care of it, and showing it love is, in my opinion, just as important as exercising. I have been so impressed with the quality of Tula's products, from their formulas to their packaging, which is recyclable, by the way. And if you are someone who wants to help keep your skin looking and feeling as healthy as possible, I cannot recommend Tula enough. If you would like to give Tula a try, follow the link down in the description below to get 15% off with the code abbycox at tula.com. And with that, one final thank you to Tula for sponsoring this video, and now let's head to the kitchen and make some cold cream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so now that we have a little bit of history over what we're doing and why we're doing it, now it's time to actually make the cold cream. I've gotten all my ingredients set up and so all we have to do is just kind of measure everything out. Now for our 18th century cold cream, we're gonna need a few ingredients and luckily they're all actually really easy to get a hold of. I got all of mine on Amazon. The exact products I use will be linked down in the description below. But what you're gonna need is you're going to need white beeswax pellets. I love these things, they're fantastic. Yojoba oil, sweet almond oil, and rose water. <laughs> and that's it. You will also need a marble mortar and pestle as well as some way to store the product. But you guys can decide on what's best for you when it comes to that. We're using rose water instead of spring water water because you one you can it says in the recipe and also it adds a little bit of scent and rose water is good for your skin and we're using the yojoba oil as a substitute for spermaceti more on that in a bit though also if you're someone who reacts to almond oil on your skin or any sort of nut oil you could try olive oil or coconut oil as its substitute it just depends on what works best for you and your skin instructions are if you want to call them that are here let's see what happens 
Uh, this recipe is really straightforward. It's very simple. I will say that I'm not 100% convinced that yojoba oil is the best substitute for spermaceti. Everything I've read about spermaceti is that it has a more waxy texture to it versus oily. And I think that waxy versus oily is important. However, everyone says online that yojoba oil is the best substitution for it. I don't really fully agree with that, but I also haven't had the time to experiment to decide whether or not there is something else that is better out there. So that is what we're using today. The other thing about this recipe that I, mm, I really kind of hate about 18th century recipes is that they're really into drams. And drams are not the easiest thing to measure, even when you have a lovely digital scale. So we're gonna do our best. This recipe as it is, not doubled or anything like that, or have calls for one M of white wax and one dram of spermaceti slash yo yo. First things first, the wax. God, this is the worst. Eventually. So next is the yojoba oil. I should, oh, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> now it's two ounces of almond oil. And this is where our protagonist would come to regret her decision later. That'll do. No, actually, that would not do. And now we just let these little wax bits melt into the oil and let it all kind of come together. And then I need to probably actually know what I'm doing afterwards. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So it says, melt the wax and spermaceti together in the oil of almonds in a glazed earthen pipkin. We ain't doing the earthen pipkin part. Mm. Over hot ashes or in a vapor bath, pour the solution into a marble mortar and stir it about with a wooden pestle until it grows cold and seems quite smooth. Then mix in the water little by little and keep stirring the mixture till the water is thoroughly incorporated. It's going to take how much? Uh, an ounce and a half of spring water. Okay. Okay, so we just got this melt and like the little pellets are doing weird things, but I love using these little wax pellets because they just melt pretty easily. And honestly, that that's it, they're gone. That was, that was it. Oh, okay. Pour into marble mortar, stir it about with wooden pestle. Oh, dog hair, hold on. We cannot have dog hair in the cold cream. This is not get two dogs, I said. It would, oh my God. Okay. I do love 18th century beauty stuff because it's just, some of it's just so wild because some of it is so like natural and something that we would love to use today. Ooh, it's, ooh, oh, it's like on the slightly opaque. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Almost cold. Okay, okay, ooh, oh, 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 get hyped, Griffey. This is, wow. Okay, so then it says, mix in the water little by little. Keep stirring the mixture. Okay, so it says this pomenum becomes extremely white and light by the agitation and very much resembles cream from its similitude to which it has obtained, it, obtained its name. Okay, so I'm having a sneaky suspicion that this is not going to look like cream as we know it, but like heavy cream from a cow. How long is this supposed to go? I don't f know, I don't f know. I just keep f stirring like I'm Sophia Nygaard. I don't f know, I hate this part. 
So here's the deal. I think we're going to do this again because I think that this recipe using your yobo oil is not, it's not the same and it's not going to do. So I think what we need to do next, is a little bit less yobo oil, a little bit more wax. I think that the final product is not the way it's supposed to be because most creams and pomatums have at least what we consider a bit of a creamy consistency. And usually they'll use words like fluids or even liquid in these books to describe something that is fluid in its nature. Oh, that's what I was doing wrong. Shit. Uh, I still don't think I completely fucked it up. I think it's okay. Um, I meant... You know, and I sat here and I thought about how like this little guy would just be so perfect for this. I just totally f forgot about it. Cause I'm sitting there like, God, I've gone through like, Ugh. anyways, anyways, let's just, let's just move on. So the next and final version I want to make before I have to go and feed my dogs is that I want to try actually adding a little bit of zinc powder into the third and final batch. I have some cosmetic grade zinc oxide powder and I need and I want to add a little bit of this. Now here's why I want to do that. Now my very greasy <laughs> recipe it actually says at the end it is also very good to prevent marks in the face from the smallpox in which last case a little powder of saffron or some desiccative powder desiccative yeah that's what that word is such as flowers of zinc or french chalk is usually added we're not doing chalk no no flowers of zinc when i googled it is basically zinc oxide. And that got me to thinking about two things. The biggest one is this idea that people in the 18th century wore white lead face paint as like cake foundation and clown makeup. And that that was a normal part of the makeup routine for men and women. Frankly, that isn't true. There is a lot of visual evidence that that is not true. People don't look like clowns in their portrait. I can just stop whoever's typing this comment right now. If people were painted to look their best and they thought having white paste makeup and overly exaggerated rouge clown cheeks was the best that is how they would look just nip that in the bud right there okay but 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 the fact that this whole cream can have zinc oxide in it it's two things one that would provide a slightly white cast to the cream two zinc oxide is a natural mineral sunscreen And if you go out and you buy sunscreen with zinc oxide or titanium oxide in it today, one of the biggest complaints people have about it is that it can give a white cast to the skin. So, guess where I'm going with this? What I think this actually is and what it could be is one, a natural sunscreen, OMG, that's amazing. 18th century sunscreen, here we are, having this moment, protecting the skin, keeping it looking the best it possibly can. That is important, but then it does also touch on the whole concept of smoothing out the skin color, lightening it up a little bit, creating a slightly more even texture, potentially, I don't know, we'll see, with using the zinc oxide. I think because of the smallpox, maybe their thought process, it doesn't say like when, in the small, smallpox recovery you are, but one of the common issues with smallpox is obviously the scarring. Even today, those who have been inoculated for smallpox have a scar on their arm where they got the inoculation. Low key, like kind of jealous about the people who actually have a smallpox vaccination because like, you know, with how things have been going, I'm a little nervous about it, to be honest. Just saying, anyways. 
I don't know if they're thinking about it as a way to kind of try and help heal the scarring or more so to try and cover up the scarring. So I'm wondering if they're kind of trying to treat it as like a slightly tinted moisturizer to kind of help smooth out the skin, to kind of help hide the redness or inflammation that could be left over from the scarring of the smallpox, or to try and attempt to basically smooth out the coloring so that way it's there, the pock marks are not as noticeable. I don't really know. They don't say why, they just say you can. And so I thought it could be super fun to try and experiment with a little bit of zinc oxide. Now the question is, how much do I put in? Because as you do in the 18th century, they say a little powder. Do not hold this recipe like as gospel. It's just me kind of experimenting with it. So after doing some quick Googling, I came to the conclusion that a good amount of zinc to experiment with for the sunscreen would be a little less than half an ounce. So I pre-weighed out the powder, combined my ingredients for the cold cream with the same ratios as version two, and I got to melting and combining. Once it became time to add the rose water, I had a moment of confusion on when I should add the zinc, cause LOL, they don't freaking tell you in the book when to do it. So obviously I took this as a, I should add them both slowly, alternating between the two to help minimize any risk to the cream's consistency. Luckily that approach worked out and everything blended together nicely. And as you can see, the final result is a very, very pasty white cream. coffee just on the wrong throat. <laughs> Goodness. Well, happy Sunday, everyone. It's the next day, and so the cold creams have had overnight to kind of sit and rest. I have also sat and rested and I am still in my PJs because it's Sunday. And I wanted to go ahead and test these out and like kind of give you all feedback over what I think they're like and how I feel about them. I have no makeup on. I have not even washed my face this morning yet. I was waiting to film this. And of course, then I got distracted because I posted the video this morning then I'm answering y'all's comments. And then, you know, you gotta eat breakfast and then you gotta have like five cups of coffee and then you gotta go watch dumb YouTube videos that, you know, about camera lenses. Anyways, I wanted to let you all know, like, this is my face. This is what my face looks like with no makeup. This is what my face looks like with, like, waking up in the morning. Like, this is, this is it. This is what we got here. I was going to wash my face with my Tula face wash, uh, exfoliate, and then tone, but no other serums, no hyaluronic acid, nothing like that. And then we're going to try these babies out and see which one uh, I think is the best. Unfortunately, today as well, I wanted to kind of see about testing the sunscreen in the sun. However, we have a snowstorm rolling in over the mountains, which is always like super cool because like the mountains like disappear, but it doesn't really work when you're trying to, you know, burn your skin for the sake of YouTube. So I have a feeling we might need to postpone the full experiment with this 18th century potential sunscreen until like summer. But you know, that could be a really fun uh, follow up to the, are you hot in that clothes? For now, we're just gonna talk about texture, color, stuff like that. But I need to wash my face first. So I'll be right back. Also, I got my Carolina swag on in my jam jam pants. I did put a bra on for you guys, so you're welcome. I'm back. Cleaned, exfoliated, and toned. Okay, fair kid. Shrilling up like a freaking prune right now. Okay, so like I said, I let's open up the first one. This one, one is, so this is a good snot consistency. I'm not, I mean like it's, <laughs> oh God. Next is version two with the one that we did that has a little bit more wax in it and a little yes, a little yes, a little less yojoba oil to kind of try and mimic what I understand spermaceti to be like, which is a little bit of a waxy consistency. Ooh, oh, oh. Okay, so it's still a bit goopy, but I don't hate it. It's not the worst 
consistency. I can probably just do my whole face and then we can try the sunscreen separately. I'll just have a really, <laughs> I'm gonna have a, a bit of a glow. Some sheen, some natural highlight. I don't have a mirror either, so I have no idea like what I even look like. I'll find out when I'm editing. <laughs> Hi, Editing Abby. The initial thing is like, I would totally wear this at night over my night moisturizers. This is really greasy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like I can, and I can feel it sitting on my face. I probably use too much, but like I live in the desert. Me and my greasy hands. <sighs> I kind of want to get a mirror, but I, oh, maybe my mom has one. Hold on, I'm gonna go back into that bathroom and look. Mom came in the clutch. She didn't have one. Let's see how how shiny I am. Ooh, it is shiny. My goodness. Don't touch my hair, or I will just look like I dumped my head in the box of oil. I mean, like really though, it's not bad. Like it's really not bad for this grease layer that is living on top of my face, sealing everything in. So this sunscreen's probably just gonna like slide right off. Let's see if I can kind of, there we go, get that initial layer off my skin. We put the version two on, it's definitely moisturizing my face. My face is definitely soft, it feels hydrated. Still prefer modern moisturizers, <laughs> but let's see what the sunscreen does. It is white. All right, let's do it. Let's see what happens. I cannot explain to you how much this goes against everything I believe in in a lot of ways, but not sun, like skincare for sunscreen, but just like 18th century and like white, anything that was like white on it. Okay, it's not bad. Well, the good news is, is I am so pale that you can't really tell that I have like the white cast that a lot of people complain about with like mineral sunscreens. Like it doesn't really bother me. I can tell I'm a little bit, just a little bit cooler toned, a little bit paler, but like not, it's not bad. If this works the way that I think it will, and so long as I don't have an adverse reaction, cause luckily this is the end of filming, I. Honestly think I might use that sunscreen as like a daily, like I think this could have a really good effect if it works. And the only way to do that is obviously to make sure, like to test it and like see if the ratio I did is, is good. With that, my friends, I am going to take my pajama self, deeply hydrated, <laughs> oily face, and I am going to call it a day. I do hope that you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you back here next week with another video. Have a lovely rest of your week. Bye. I'm so hydrated. I just love being hydrated. My lip is finally healing. Cause I beat the shit out of it last week. There are literally greasy handprints all over this table, all over my mom's mirror, all over my camera gear. It's great. It's good luck. I am a greasy bitch. When I take a sip of my coffee, I like the steam of it kind of activates the rose water, and so it kind of smells like an old lady <laughs> with like the coffee as the rose. I guess it, I smell like my grandma who went by Grammy. I don't know, Dad, you're gonna have to confirm this one, but I think I smell like Grammy. There's no cigarettes, so I don't smoke, but she did. So I think if we added some stale cigarettes in there, I smell like my grandma, Grammy. I can't drink my coffee anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna go wash my face again. <laughs>